Hey there, in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how you can do some basic photo retouching in Adobe Photoshop. Uh, we're going to be covering um, a range of retouching techniques including uh, using the liquify tool, the clone stamp, the patch tool, the spot healing brush, um, various airbrushing techniques using surface blur um, and layer masks, and how you can change hair and eye color using adjustment layers. First up, what we're going to do is go to the file menu in Photoshop and go to open. On the desktop I've got a file that um, I'm going to be using to do some retouching with today and I'm going to start by opening that up. Now the first thing I'm going to do so that I'm not editing the original file is go to File and Save As. Once again I'm going to save this onto um, the desktop but instead of saving it as a JPEG I'm going to save it as a Photoshop document so that it's got layers in it. Um, and I'm going to quite happily call that sample photograph and hit save. Now one of the things I really like to do when I'm retouching photos is be able to go back through the steps um, or the changes that I've made to a particular document and to that end uh, before I start off the first thing I'm going to do is make a copy of the background layer. Now in Photoshop there are a number of different ways that you can duplicate a layer. First of all you can select that layer in the layers palette and if you can't see the uh, layers palette, you can always show it by going to Window and Layers. The first way I can duplicate this is by selecting the layer, going to the Layer menu and Duplicate Layer. I'll be then presented with a uh, dialog box where I can enter a new name for that layer and hit OK. And you'll notice that in the Layers palette over here, it's created a copy of that uh, background layer. I'm going to delete that by dragging it to the small delete a layer icon at the bottom of the layers palette. Another way that you can duplicate a layer is by right clicking on it um, and on some Macs you may need to hold down control um, and left click and then you can select duplicate layer from a contextual menu. The third way that you can duplicate a layer is by selecting the layer and dragging it down to the create a new layer icon in the bottom of the layers palette. And that's my preferred way of copying a layer. Uh, I just like it. All right, now that I've created this um, new layer, I'm going to set about uh, doing some basic photo retouching. Now, Photoshop has a terrific tool called um, Liquify, and you can find that by going to the filter menu and dropping down to um, Liquify. What that does is opens up a um, liquify menu where there are a range of different tools that you can use to uh, manipulate the photograph that you're working on. Now the type of changes we're going to be performing here um, are sort of fundamental changes to the, the shape of um, a face. Now if you ever wished you had a smaller nose, or well, maybe a bigger nose, um, this is the type of tool that you'd be using to do that. Now, over in the um, left-hand side of the Liquify palette, there are a number of different um, tools to choose from. I'm going to start by demonstrating how to use the Forward Warp tool. Now, when I have selected that and I move my cursor over the photograph, you'll notice that um, it appears as a brush uh, with a crosshair in the middle. Now, in Photoshop, when you're using brushes like this, the easiest way to make them bigger, bigger and smaller is by pressing the um, square bracket keys on the keyboard. I'm holding down the right square bracket key and what that's doing is making the uh, brush size larger. Now I'm going to make it so it's just a little bit larger than the eye here and just demonstrate what the forward warp tool does. Now the forward warp tool allows you to um, essentially move objects around by pushing them. And you'll see how it works when I take this to an extreme by moving the eye over here like that. Of course, that looks pretty um, silly for the purposes of what we're doing, um, but it gives you a demonstration of what the forward warp tool does. It allows you to um, push features around. So if you'd like your nose a little bit higher, you can do that um, using the forward warp tool. Another tool that you'll find particularly useful um, in the Liquify palette is the pucker tool. And if I select that and bring it over here and just hover above the nose, I'll um, just give a quick demonstration of how that works. What it essentially does is um, it, it puckers the image so that you can take a feature like a nose and just by clicking a couple of times make it a little bit smaller. And I'm just pressing Command Z to undo so you can see those changes. 
The other um, tool that you might find useful for this sort of photo manipulation is the bloat tool, which again lives over here in the um, toolbar. I'm going to grab the bloat tool and demonstrate what it does by, again, just clicking on one of the eyes here. Pressing a couple of times, you'll notice that it can make features larger. Once again, I'm going to hold down the Command Z tool um, to show you how that object's changed. Now, uh, you can achieve really subtle and nice things by um, manipulating facial features in this way making eyes a little bit larger, making noses a little bit smaller, that sort of thing. And of course it's a great way to do really cool caricaturing. Uh, there are a couple of other um, tools over here that are worth mentioning. Um, the hand tool allows you to um, move an image around and the zoom tool um, allows you to zoom in on a particular feature so you can move in really nice and close. And if I grab the hand tool by pressing um, H on my keyboard or selecting it from the tool palette, you'll notice that I can now move around, uh, move the object around in the liquify menu. Um, I'm going to go down to this drop down menu and return to about 25%. Actually I could probably zoom in a little bit more. Um, so once you've used these liquify tools to make um, basic changes to um, a photograph, uh, you can um, press OK and those changes uh, will be applied to the image. And by turning off the top layer, you'll notice um, that you can see the changes that you've made. The first method I'm going to use for uh, removing blemishes today is using the clone stamp tool. Now you can find the clone stamp over in the um, toolbox over here. Um, to another way of selecting it is by holding, uh, pressing S on your keyboard. Um, when you're using shortcuts like this in Photoshop, it really helps you to work more efficiently and more effectively. Now to demonstrate how the clone stamp uh, works, what I'm going to do is grab the zoom tool by pressing Z and zoom into uh, this area here. What you'll notice is there's a small blemish on the forehead here. And what I'm going to do is grab the clone stamp tool once again by pressing S. And you can make the clone stamp tool bigger and smaller by pressing the square bracket keys on your keyboard. And I'm just going to make it a little bit larger than the blemish here. Now another thing you'll notice about the clone stamp tool is when you look up in the options bar here, you'll notice that on my computer the opacity for this tool is set to 50%. If you press 1 on your keyboard, what you'll notice is that the opacity for this tool changes to 10%. When you press 2, it changes to 20%. When you press 3, to 30%, and so on. When you reach 0 on the number keys, uh, what it will do is set the opacity to 100%. Now, I like setting the opacity to 50% so that I don't directly clone um, an area, and I can very subtly um, cover something up. Now, to demonstrate how the clone stamp tool works, um, I'm going to go down to um, the zoomed area here, and I'm going to find a piece of blemish-free skin. Now I'm going to select uh, the area just next to this blemish. Um, it's best if you choose something near the area of skin uh, so that it blends more easily. Now I'm going to hold down the Option key with the Clone Stamp tool selected. And what you'll notice is that the icon changes from a brush icon uh, to um, a small crosshair. And I'm going to select this area of skin by clicking my mouse button. Now what will happen if I move my clone stamp tool over here is that when I uh, click once, you'll notice that I'm cloning that area. And if I click a couple of times, it'll cover up the blemish that I've got here. Perhaps a more um, dramatic demonstration of how the clone stamp tool works um, can be achieved if I zoom out to 50%, um, increase the size um, of my clone stamp. Um, I'm going to hold down the option key and select the eye and just show you how this works, uh, the clone stamp tool works. Now clearly that's not the effect uh, that we're looking for. I'm going to go to the uh, window menu, drop down to history and I'm going to just uh, go back through um, the history of my clone stamp until I've removed uh, that glaring error there. 